Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to TMXT Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan, and this week is budget week. So I'm showing you this week how easy it is to make amazing food in a Thermomix really simply, really easily. And I'm gonna be guided by cookiedo.com.au, which is our recipe library of uh, amazing recipes. Now tonight we're cooking the Parmesan risotto. Now risotto is a Thermomix classic, and I'd love to know in the chat, do you if you're watching, are you a risotto fan? Like I know some people love it, they'll go to a restaurant and they'll buy risotto. And some people are like, no way, gluggy rice, not for me. So what are you? Now we use it here usually as a veggie packed dinner for my kids. Now truth be known, hubby and I, we are happy to never have risotto again in our life. I have been doing this gig as a Thermomix consultant and team leader for coming up to nine years. And you know what, when I first started many years ago, risotto was one of the two main meal options we had, mushroom risotto or velouté. Has anyone else been around long enough to know and remember those? Uh, so you know what, we did lots of risotto in early years uh, when I was a consultant and starting out because I had to know it off by heart. This was before guided cooking, this was in TM31 days. So it had to be all stored up here. Since then though, the recipe has evolved, obviously our Thermomix has evolved and now it's guided, which is fantastic. It takes the brain work out and you never forget to push reverse because you don't have to, it does it for you. So I'm gonna show you today this brand new one, it's Parmesan risotto, it's really simple, but I'm gonna give you tips for making it cheaper, because I said this is budget week. If you need to cook to a budget, your Thermomix is your perfect tool to do so. So I'm gonna just do budget tips, but I'm also gonna talk about substitutions and hiding ingredients, okay? I'm gonna follow this pretty closely, uh, but I'm going to um, chuck those things in as well. So welcome to those of you who are watching me for the first time. There seems to be lots of new names showing up, so welcome. So you can see this as TM6 metric. That's because it's not from the Australian Cookie Do platform. Now, if your filters are set correctly, you'll find it anyway. If your filters are only set to Australian, you will struggle. You'll need to go up to your profile and adjust your filters up the top. If you need help, that's what I'm here for. I love nothing more than helping you get the most out of your Thermomix. So please don't hesitate to reach out. If you're going, I can't find it, Lisa. So we can scroll down and get the ingredients out. Today, we're just gonna go start cooking. So. First thing you can see Parmesan, okay? Now it says cubed up Parmesan. I'm gonna show you a bit of a cost saving tip that we do here. We actually do our Parmesan in bulk. So I'm going to just grab my Parmesan. I'm going to cube it up. You can see it on there on the screen into chunks. And I generally do about the thickness of the, the speed knob, about the thickness and about the width or the height, sorry, the height. So it ends up being about that size so you can see or you can't it's behind the second camera but it's about that size okay about an inch by oh, what two centimeters sorry uh by half a centimeter to a centimeter all right now i'm gonna do more than 45 grams because i actually tend to do my block and i freeze it so if i'm doing it once i figure i might as well do it for the whole lot or at least most of the block this is about probably about a third of a block we tend to use parmesan for cheesy puffs and this and risottos we don't even tend to use Parmesan on a risotto very often. Um, it really depends on the flavoring of the night and if we remember, often we don't even remember. So I'm gonna do a lot more than the recipe calls for because while I'm making it do one thing, I might as well make it do more than one thing. So I'm gonna put that in and then I'm gonna take my lid. So you can see that's 150 grams, that's okay. Insert the lid into the mixing bowl here, thus lid. And then we go next. And now it's gonna take 10 seconds to make a grated Parmesan. So let me show you how this is done. Excuse me, I won't talk for 10 seconds. Okay, Thermomix sings at you when it's done. So if you were doing this in your kitchen, uh, you'd walk away, do something else, get your next ingredient out. Obviously I'm on a lie, I'm gonna stand here and uh, watch it, aren't I? What I'm gonna put it in now is a bag for my freezer. These are silicon reusable bags from the mix shop, where I think they're still there. Um, these are awesome, otherwise you'd use a glad bag. Put it in something flexy because you wanna be able to break it up at the end, okay? So otherwise you'll find it just clumps together and then you gotta get a fork into it and it's super hard to deal with. You'll notice it's quite powdery, reminds me of the old faster pasta shakers on the, on the tables when as a kid. So we're just gonna put that into there. And then when it comes to serving up later, after I drop some things on the floor, after I come to serve it up later, then I can just pick and choose how much we use. And usually we don't use the 45 grams. It's really just a sprinkling on the top. 
So in that goes, make sure you get all of it out because the next step usually tells us to transfer to a bowl and then it actually normally tells us to wash the bowl out. Not in this recipe. I love it when it doesn't tell us to do that. Now, the reason it would normally tell us to wash the bowl out is it's worried about you burning it to the bottom. Dairy is renowned, excuse me, I just got to get the thing for this, renowned for cooking onto the base of a bowl, okay, because it's going over um, 100 degrees and dairy doesn't like that. It actually burns. So that's why you would ordinarily wash it out, but you guys know if you've been watching me for a long time, I never wash it out, okay? Good afternoon, Carissa. Lovely to have you on this afternoon. So first thing, asking for 85 grams of onion quartered. So here's my onion. Okay, now I do know if I looked ahead, it's gonna use a high heat function, which is why it also wants it quartered. So it is a little different. Normally we see it just in halves with our onion, but in this case, it's asking for quarter. Two cloves of garlic. Now I'm on jarred at the moment, keeping it real. One day our beautiful garlic will be ready, but not yet. Hello, Anne, lovely to have you on today. Okay, some oil, olive oil. Oh, the lid came off. So now the next ingredient is butter. Now we tend to reduce our dairy. Uh, there's a couple of tummy ache issues in our household. So I'm not gonna put the butter in because I'm going to allow them to have Parmesan later. So it's kind of that offset, that one or the other. So I'm gonna skip the butter and it doesn't seem to matter. I guess it would taste a little buttery if you have the butter, but it'll be fine without, okay? We always skip the butter in our risotto. Now, if you wanted to hide veggies in this re recipe, there's your butter, by the way, 30 grams. If you wanted to hide veggies in this recipe, you certainly could. You would do it at the onion step. Chuck in a carrot, celery, zucchini, broccoli stems, whatever you like. Blitz it down and it will be then do that before we actually do that before we add the onion because then it's going to be a nice little uh, grate in the bottom. Then put your onions on top. All right. I would do it if I was hiding veggies in there. We are going budget, so I'm not going to use any veggies, but if you had them in the, you know, the crisp that are looking a bit funky, then use them up. Now, high heat. We're about to do high heat. However, since I've got back, uh, I can't find my splash guard. So I don't know if I've left it in a demo. So the backup plan is simmering basket. Okay, the idea behind the splash guard is it stops the splashing out of the top of the thermomix. Now you might be watching along and you might have a TM31 or a TM5 and you don't have this high heat function we're using right now. Okay, don't let that stop you cooking for this video later. You're gonna put three minutes, you're gonna put Varoma and you can put on slow stir and let it cook, okay? You're not gonna get it quite the same texture that you're gonna get with high heat, okay? It's just the way it goes. Although I loved my TM5 and I would have made it like this anyway, uh, but it's just gonna be slightly different. But I'm gonna show you in a second uh, what we end up with with the high heat function. Now, with the high heat, it wiggled and jiggled and now it's stopped. And now it's sizzling, which I don't know if you can actually hear, uh, but I certainly can. And it sounds like a saucepan, okay, on the stove. And when you've got a thermomix and you're using it effectively, uh, and I guess to its capacity or its, um, what's the word I'm after, to its most, which is what I hope I inspire you to do, you won't find yourself using a saucepan anymore. We actually don't have saucepans anymore. I have one very big crock pot, uh, but I do not own saucepans because anything you do on a saucepan can be done in the thermomix, okay? So fry pan, you may still use. You wanna fry off bacon and eggs or a steak, but saucepans for boiling things, steaming things, your thermomix replaces all those things in the kitchen. So we're nearly done there. It's wiggling and jiggling in there and I'm just letting it do its thing. Now, if you are doing this at home, you've got a preview button. The preview button will show you what you need next. Now, if I go preview, it's gonna tell me that it says remove the splash guard and then we chop it. I can't wait to show you this chop. It is amazing. It is actually my favorite thing about high heat, besides the sugar stages of making honeycomb. It's one of my favorite things about the TM6. So I'll show you that in a moment. But then it's got risotto rice. Now this is a Borio rice. You can swap it for basmati, okay? Some people have, you know, in the past go, oh, it's not legitimately a risotto, then it's not, but it will work. So if you open the cupboard door and I'm like, I'm gonna make a risotto tonight, and then you don't have it, you can do the swap, all right? It will work the same with basmati. So it just has a slightly different texture. So it's gonna have our Borio rice, which you can just get at Coles and Woolworths. It's called a Borio rice, okay? It's made for risottos. It's starchier, it's a bigger granule, uh, and I think it's a short grain rice. Maybe a medium. And cook that off for three minutes. 
Then we're gonna to come to a step, the next one, where it actually says to add wine. Now, wine is completely optional. If you don't have wine, you can omit it. So long as you have veggie stock. If you don't have your veggie stock and you skip the wine, you'll be saying, least that was really bland, okay? Because veggie stock will lift your flavor immensely. The wine gives it another dynamic as well. Um, I do have some that's been in the fridge sitting there for quite a long time, so I am gonna use it. You guys have been watching for a long time, know that I just use whatever I can find in the fridge. Sometimes it's old champers, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white, it's whatever comes. We're not big wine drinkers here. So you can skip that, but you must have this then. And if you've got this, it's time to make it, okay? It's veggies and salt, that's all it is. And it's amazing, it just lifts your dish. Okay, so our high heat is done. By the way, I actually really prefer my splash guard over this because this doesn't fit in the dishwasher as well as the splash guard, which is quite flat does. So if I had my preference, that's what I'd use. However, I can't find it. So, you know, it was no point looking any longer. Okay, remove the splash guard and insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. How good is guided recipes that you don't have to remember what you're up to? So now we spin it and it's gonna chop on speed five for three seconds. So you can hear there's a delay. This is the heat override for the high heat. I'll wait for it to do its thing. Now let me show you this chop because this is one of my favorites, okay? This is a game changer when it comes to high heat because you actually get, um, it reminds me of Bunnings, Bar Bunnings barbecues. You know the onion on the Bunnings, Bunnings barbecues? That's what it reminds me of. It is strips of onion. It is not, borderline paste and you guys know what I mean by that <laughs> you've got a TM5 or 31 or even a 6 you know what that is when we chop an onion from raw the texture you get so let's go next 285 grams I'm going to use 330 you're wondering why this is a one kilo packet there is nothing worse than being left with 60 grams left of a boreo rice we might as well use a third of the packet so that we end up with exactly the right amount used or close to. So here comes this. Now the reason it cooks off, I'm gonna just give you a little bit of a info on why we cook it off and how we cook it off. Um, without the measuring cup. So first things first, let's get this step going and then I'll talk to you about that. We let the measuring cup off because we want it, the humidity to come out of it. But what we're actually doing is we're sealing the outside of the rice granules. This is the step where we actually make them so that you get a soft inside. Um, but kind of something that hasn't gone to mush. If we don't cook them off for three minutes, you lose the integrity of the rice and it just doesn't then, it goes to mush. It's the easiest thing to say, coming from the person who's made mistakes over the years when we had to know it off by heart, if you don't cook it, you'll end up with a mush. Um, I kind of, it's nearly like creamed rice, but too far gone in a savory version, okay? So, yeah. Those of you watching on, tell me, risotto, is that something you make? Do you have a favorite risotto recipe or is it something you still go out and buy or are you an anti-risotto person? I'd love to know because I know it's one of those things, it's a divide thing. Some people love it, some people don't. So, and as I've made mention, we are past our time of risotto. However, my kids still really love risottos, pastas and things like that. So, two minutes to go. Now, one other thing is my favorite risotto to actually follow is mushroom risotto. Those of you who've had demos with me over the years, you would know the reason why, because I tell you this at your demo. And it's actually the reason for that you can, it's a four step recipe. You can hide anything in it. It doesn't need to be mushroom. And it's got 15 minute cook time where you walk away and do anything else you want. And that's what I love the most. So when my people were really little, when I, my four boys were really little, we could get home at six o'clock at night and they would be dying of hunger. And I'd be saying, okay guys, give me five minutes. I'm gonna get dinner on and then you guys are gonna get in the bath and do all the shower. And then when the Thermomix goes off, you guys are getting out. And I knew that I had that five minutes to set up. It cooked off the onion with the oil and the garlic and the veggies usually. It then cooked off the rice I usually didn't put wine in and it did, then did the cook time and the, the, the um, veggie stock. And it then cooked for 15 minutes. And it was that perfect thing that they could then get out the shower and it was, it was cool enough to eat. So perfect recipe for, and, and the other thing is, I forgot to make mention, uh, with the water and the veggie stock step, if you don't have mushrooms, it could be, it could be raw chicken, it could be 
It could be roast pumpkin. It could be whatever you had on hand. Or if I had chopped a whole lot of veggies in at the, the mushroom, um, at the garlic step, no, the onion step, if I had chopped veggies in there, then of course that was, it was a vegetable one. We had all those good veggies in it. So I love, absolutely love, love, love mushroom risotto. The TM5 version is my ultimate favorite risotto of all time because you can do so much with it in four steps. So that is mine. I love Anne, you love the mushroom one as well. Yep, it's such a fantastic recipe. All right, nine seconds to go. By the way, talking about demos, host your demo this month and there is a bowl blade and lid set you can get discounted. Whether you got TM31, TM5, TM6, it doesn't matter, but you can get a discounted one. And if a friend happens to be ready to buy, then you actually get it even further discounted again. So let me know if you would like a demonstration because I can demo for you all over Australia, which is pretty cool. Um, so wine now i do have wine today as i said don't know how long it's been in the fridge for but you know that's all right doesn't expire right 60 grams of that and then it's going to cook off now if you skip the wine step what do you do instead let me just tell you this next step has a one minute cook time so it's not long however it's vital if you don't cook it for this one minute and you skip straight to the next step, you will end up with crunchy rice. And it's not savable rice, all right? Now, there are many of the times I've done a demo and we get to the end of the recipe and everyone looks in the bowl and goes, oh my gosh, it looks really sloppy, Lise. And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's all good, all right? Sloppy risotto at the end is fine. You've got to let it sit. It needs five to 10 minutes in your Thermomix, take the lid off, and it will just absorb in that last liquid. If you try and cook it on longer and longer, you will lose its texture and it will be a mush. And you'll be going, oh my gosh, I never want risotto again. All right, so give it five to 10 rest at the end and it is just amazing. Okay, now if you're gonna cook a long later with a TM31, I must make mention of the on these steps. Please remember once that rice goes in, it's gonna go on reverse for each step. So it's stirred and not chops. You don't want it going forwards. You don't want it mushing up that rice, okay? Now we're up to the very last step. 700 grams of water, so excuse me, we'll actually take it over to the sink and I will be back and I'm just gonna put some water in it over here. Gonna guesstimate and hope that it's pretty close. And I'm gonna put a cup aside as well. You can see the scales, remember? Oh, not enough, let's put some in a cup. I was gonna have a jug of water, but I forgot. Here we go. Now it is okay to be a little over, a little under. The Thermomix is super forgiving, so don't feel like you have to be spot on. I'm rarely spot on. Okay, next up is our veggie stock, and it says one stock cube beef or vegetable or one heaped pea between a stock paste. You know what? I've made this recipe enough times to know it's a tablespoon, okay? Not a heap tablespoon, just a tablespoon. So that's how much I would add. However, with the tablespoon then, there's no need to add uh, salt later okay it will be too potent if you add salt as well as stock this is your salt okay and it is just amazing so I can see Carissa saying I haven't made the risotto since we did the demo time to do it again it's just a classic hello Angeline from New Zealand lovely to have you on see the salt step skip it you put the good stuff in instead that's got nutrient value as well because it's got all those veggies and salt and that's all stock is veggies and salt how could that? All right, nearly done. Scrape the bottom of the bowl. Not even gonna bother. That's just to try and prevent any buildup or burning on the bottom. Citric acid is your best friend. If you wanna know how to clean your bowl with citric acid, let me know and I will let you know at the end. Uh, actually, send me a message or comment and I will send you through the instructions on how to use citric acid to get any burn off the bottom of your bowl with no elbow grease, okay? Place the simmering basket on top. This is the last step. Now, the reason the simmering basket goes on top is again to let it sweat out all right if you put your mc in place it will make a big mess and you will not get a great risotto at the end because it can't get rid of the humidity out of the bowl so 13 minutes time it's going to look soggy remember lisa said it's going to look soggy you gotta let it sit five ten minutes it's too hot to eat anyway it's 100 degrees in there so it's going to be way too hot to eat let it sit still let it do its thing then you can put some parmesan over the top and serve it up if you like herbs and stuff by all means i think this is yummy with some herbs on top some parsley and stuff but honestly beautiful on its own because it's got the beautiful veggie stock in it all right guys that's it for me this evening i know that's been a bit of a longer um, 
video than usual, live video for you guys, but I hope you've taken away some tips and hints for budgeting with your Thermomix um, for making an amazing risotto. Now I am here to support you to help you get the most out of your Thermomix or if you don't have one yet, I'm here to help you get one on the bench. So do reach out, I'd love to support you get one and then continue to get more and more out of it because there is so much a Thermomix can do to make your life so much easier in the kitchen and save you money at the checkout as well. So take care and I will be back here tomorrow afternoon for some more recipes. I feel like we're up to pizza day tomorrow night because pizza, can be so cheap when you've got a Thermomix and amazing, just top notch quality. So I can't wait to show you some shortcuts tomorrow for making amazing pizza dough in the Thermomix and my tips for having a cheap pizza night with the family as well. So take care and I'll see you tomorrow night for some more Thermomixing. Bye for now guys.